I'm not sure this one needs much of an introduction, but this is Sports Car GT, a racing simulator released in 1999 on PC and PlayStation 1, uh, developed by Image Space Incorporated and published by Electronic Arts EA. This was an amazing sim when it came out, and I know a favorite of many in the sim racing community. As the title suggests, Sports Car GT covers sports car racing, and I, I think it was really one of the first sports car simulators. You, of course, had the Papyrus Sims and the Jeff Crammon Sims, uh, but those always focused on Formula One, IndyCar, NASCAR, and sports cars themselves often <laughs> were the neglected ones. Uh, and so this was really one of the first, if not the first, true sports car simulators, and the community took notice. This game, probably most famous for, or, or really took off because of the modding community around it. And so many add-on cars and tracks and things were released for it. Uh, and that's probably what most folks remember it from. It's what I remember it from. But the base game itself is is quite good. And obviously, um, even though it led on to greater things, is still worth taking a look at. Now, Image Space Incorporated, if that sounds familiar, of course, they are the developers these days of R Factor 2. And Sports Car GT, I believe, was their first racing simulator, and it pioneered the great G Motor 1 engine. This is the racing engine, the graphic and physics engine, and everything that went on to power uh, the early EA Formula 1 simulators, uh, and then on through to R Factor 1, and of course, today, R Factor 2. And I think they're on G Motor 2 now, or even beyond that. Uh, but this was really the start of all that. And you can tell, at least I can, you can see some of that future modeling, especially with R Factor 1 or the uh, early EA titles for Formula 1 that you know make this look like part of that family. So a really great baseline of physics, uh, great graphics for the time, and uh, great racing overall. So the sim itself doesn't specifically cover one racing series, but it's it's obviously heavily influenced by the American Le Mans series, 1998-1999. You can tell from the intro video, looking at the BMW there, the 911, the Panos. Um, this is all stuff from that season, and because of the tracks and car list as well, I can tell that the American Le Mans series was definitely the series they were looking at, if not only just not getting the license for it overall. But the sim itself does have an interesting starting point. Uh, you have two modes to pick from we're looking at here quick race versus career mode uh, and this is a sim that you actually have to unlock a lot of the content in, and that was one of the main objections to the sim overall from folks reviewing it early on is it's just hard to unlock things uh, and quickly it was discovered there were cheat codes to unlock everything but by default you actually don't get really any of the uh, tracks and cars and things to race with you're really stuck with a very limited amount of content however the career mode is actually quite fun so I thought I could go in and do uh, maybe a few rounds of the career mode just to show off sports car gt for those of you that maybe haven't seen it before and didn't know what this was all about so like any good racing game we have to start off and actually buy our vehicle and we get to see uh, all the different vehicles that do exist in the game from here so they're split up into four classes by default and in this gtq class we've got porsche 911s uh, the panos esperante and the bmw m3 uh, for selection of cars these have all statistics and things, and I've got a hundred or a hundred thousand credits to start off with, and so you can choose to buy your cars for that. You obviously win credits in the races, uh, and this game even has a upgrade system for cars as well, where you can buy pieces and parts. We'll take a look at that in a second. So, pricing out what you want to buy here is quite important. Uh, if you buy the hundred thousand dollar BMW, it might be the best car. Uh, although I don't even think it has the most, most horsepower, but it might be the best car performance wise, but you have zero money left uh, maybe to buy any upgrades or have to wait a little, little bit longer. Uh, looking through the other classes, come up to GT3, get the Saline Mustang, which is a great car. You see that in some of the uh, screenshots from the game. Another 911 RSR, the M3 as well the Esperante again. Uh, GT2 come up a little higher in classes so you work your way up through all these and it was always quite exciting to unlock the next class. Uh, I remember doing that. Uh, we got the GT2 911 as well. Another Saline Mustang but this Vector M12. Very cool looking car. 445,000 credits so take a while there in that. Then ultimately the GT1 class um, a great selection of, of cars as well. Uh, the CLK, the Mosler Raptor, McLaren F1, um, and 
One of the things I know the reviews and everything talk about with this game as well is just how great the car selection was and how fun the very fast cars were to race. But I'll be honest with you, I never actually got to these cars uh, when I played the game back in the day. I didn't know about the cheat codes or anything, and I think I got to the GT2 class at some stage, but moved on from the game uh, then and uh, didn't didn't revisit it. I think I played it quite late. So uh, it'd be fun to maybe try to get up to these cars and see what they were like, uh, but a great selection of, of GT1 cars from the time. Uh, to race with as well. But we'll start with the GTQ class and I'm trying to think of what I want to actually go with. Probably go with the 911. Uh, we'll see what livery I want here. We'll go with this Speed Vision. Oh, awesome. Speed Vision number 32. It's 80,000, so I'll have 20,000 credits left over. I'll buy that. Now, obviously, you can go sell a vehicle at some stage. Uh, right now, if we were to sell it, we'd be uh, out of luck with the career. And that's actually another criticism I saw in the reviews of this game as well as you can actually mess up your career if you want to call it that if you buy the wrong vehicle or uh, don't make enough money or obviously here i could sell a vehicle you won't be able to do anything in the career anymore so you have to actually pay attention to what you're doing which is kind of fun uh if we look in the vehicle parts these are all the different systems and things you can upgrade and uh, i remember spending a lot of time with this it's a little a la uh gran turismo uh but i could go ahead and look at turbochargers and they're just out of reach uh i remember always buying the turbos because I thought that's what would make you quicker but you can buy three different levels of upgrades here um, but all the different parts of the car so if you're feeling like you're underperforming on a certain piece of the car then uh, you can come in here and try to address that I think I might save the credits for now and see how I perform with just the bone stock car 283 horsepower twin turbo six cylinder um, we obviously have to start a season here uh, we'll be doing GTQ uh, I'll do low race length just for this video max difficulty we'll see how hard it is overall and we'll start a new season all right, so looking at the schedule for the season, and the first series here, it starts three tracks, easy enough, uh, but they're all the three fictional tracks. And so this game, like I said, has a good selection of tracks. There's these three fictional tracks, which are quite good. I remember them quite a lot from back in the day, but this game does have a, a good selection of real tracks as well. I know uh, Moe Sport, Road Atlanta, Laguna Seca, Donington, Hockenheim, Lime Rock Park uh, are all part of this, maybe even more than that. I think Sebring as well is one of the big ones. So. Uh, as you move on through the series, you get to race all those great real tracks. Uh, but for this, we'll actually we'll go ahead and race on these fictional ones for our little championship. And like any true simulator, you have a garage where you can adjust your car and uh, how it drives and everything. And so um, I actually never really played around with the setups much back in the day. But I know I know this is something that you can really spend a lot of time in the physics engine in this is quite good um it's it, it is a game where you can really tune the cars and get them to behave you know it, it's not obviously to the levels of the modern r factor 2 and r factor 1 and things but you can tell it's an earlier iteration of that same engine and so the cars do behave believable they're a little bouncy you can definitely hit each other uh a little like british btcc racing or something but um they are fun to drive realistic enough that you can have a good time with it overall Okay, so I got the first race of three at Chatham, and I'm going to go out and do a qualifying lap here. This, this course overall is pretty interesting, you'll see, but the first corner, like it looks on the screen here, is, is kind of an oval. And so back in the day, I really liked this track a lot uh, for that reason alone, but it's a, it's a fun one to race on for sure. All right, so coming to the end of the warm-up lap here for the qualifying at Chatham, and uh, we're in the cockpit of the 911. I uh, remember this cockpit, it's the same exact cockpit for every single car, but it's a pretty interesting little cockpit for a uh, sports car. But we'll come around, I think I got two qualifying laps. Flat out fifth gear, head into this first corner. And uh, I am using a wheel and pedals and everything for this game, running it on Windows 10 with modern hardware and all that. But interesting, the only thing I couldn't really get to work like I'd wanted to is the controller setup. It seems like the game overall only supports one controller. Come down the hill here, dip off the gas through the chicane only supports one joystick so i had to rip out the old g27 wheel instead of my fanatec to uh, give this a go but it's worth it overall come through the final corner there it's a very short lap you'll see that with the fictional tracks here they're all pretty short laps overall right, we'll come to the line see what this lap is hopefully quick enough to not start last I'm not expecting to be quick as just because I don't have any of the upgrades in the car yet and I uh, have the AI on max, but we'll see. I don't remember how competitive they are overall.
And there is force feedback in this in this game. It was early days uh, for force feedback in 1999, 2000 or so when this first had come out. It's not great force feedback. It mostly interacts with you. Oh, I'll slide the car there. Mostly interacts with you in the uh, curbs, in the corners. If I touch the curbs, I can feel a strong pull on the wheel. So not exactly realistic, but neat to see that it's there. But we'll come to the line, complete the qualifying attempt here, and uh, see where we're going to start. So I qualified pretty much middle of the road here, starting in 10th. I was just taking a quick look at the list of names. First of all, I got two Dan Marvins, which is <laughs> interesting enough. No problem there. But we also are racing against Maldonado. Um, hopefully no relation. But, and then also I noticed Allison Hine, who is very prominent in the sim racing community pretty early on. She ran a website that is actually still up that talks a lot about different games. So I wonder if she was a beta tester uh, for this. But I don't think I recognize any other names. But yeah, starting in 10th. So pretty much right in the middle. I think we got a 60 car grid and so we'll get going here for the first race of our little championship all right so here we are on the grid pitched kind of sideways wait for those lights to turn green away we go a little slow on the start a lot of smoke off the line but there we go head down towards the first corner bmw getting a run on me from the outside we're falling back in positions hopefully the car is competitive Ooh. I remember the AI being quite good in this, especially for the time. you got to contextualize yourselves as as to what else was popular around this time. I just took a look at that NASCAR Craftsman truck game. Uh, but if you compare that to this, physics-wise, it's on a whole new level. All right, we'll come through the chicane, though, on the outside, side by side with the car. Down a fourth gear here, just slide it on through. So in ninth position now behind a 911. Oh, everybody gets stacked up there. Come around the outside. A little bit slow. I can barely hear my own engine. Oh, I got a tap behind one of the Penos. Esperante is there. Right up to fifth gear. Five gears in the car using paddle shifters. Pretty easy to get the feeling of the car, and I remember I actually played this a bit on the keyboard and then moved to joystick. Uh, I didn't yet have a wheel when I was when I was playing this, but I remember it being controllable with those two, which is definitely an art to make a game that's controllable both with a wheel and a keyboard and a joystick and all of that. But pulling it nicely here on this BMW. Put it in third gear for the final corner. Try to get a nice exit. side by side Ooh. knocking doors a little bit definitely down on top speed compared to everybody else even getting the slipstream and by modern standards obviously this is not the prettiest game but this game looked gorgeous for a simulator you know coming from the software rendered papyrus games and everything at the time this was something totally new and you needed quite the computer to take advantage of it oh bmw checks up in front see if i can come around the outside of them i should have mentioned this is a 10 minute race so we've got seven minutes 45 left so we've got actually a good amount of time to try to get up front Another interesting aspect about this game too was the race lengths. I know some of the later races, you know, if you raced in the long mode, I think could be a couple hours long, which was kind of unheard of for racing games back then. The BMW is going to come back around me, so if I can take the proper line through the corner. There we go. So falling back, we're in sixth. Be good to get a top five at least. I think I'm much quicker here through the chicane if I get the line right. Just like that. Pull up on the group in front, down to fourth. Gonna get real good at this track by the end of this. Oh, everybody gets stacked up there now. Get a good run onto the front straightaway. I'll probably get passed back though. Coming to the uh, Electronic Arts banner. I know folks these days got a bad taste in their mouth around EA and everything, but back in 1999, EA was known for quality. If you wanted good games, good simulators and things, they were definitely the ones to uh, get them from. Even all the way up through, obviously. 
obviously, you know, F1 Challenge and things for the PC. They were definitely some of the top games with ISI here. Down to fourth gear. Oh, getting hooked on the BMW. Oh, we'll go into the soup. The dirt is absolutely like mud here. Oh, and I made the pass too, up to, I think, third. All right, got plenty of time though, six minutes to try to get back around these two in front and no idea where the leaders went. You can see, do have that little tracker on the very bottom of the screen, which is showing the whole field and first and second, they're very close actually. It looks like 21, but it's actually first and second. They're a nose to tail way ahead of us. So that might be out of the question for this one, but not bad for the uh, first race so far the top of the hill. This part reminds me a little bit of Road Atlanta, which was obviously also in the game. We'll come around the outside of him here. Down on the brakes, down a fourth gear. Down a third then. <laughs> Scrubbing paint. All right, we'll head up the hill. So back up to fourth. Block the M3 behind me. There's no penalties here for blocking, so we'll just take full advantage. Race midpoint, so we're halfway through. And yeah, I don't know if we'll get around, I think we'll definitely get around third place here, but then I don't know if we'll have the speed to catch the top two in time. I'll try my best here. So much quicker through this section, get held up a little bit there by the 911, but absolutely able to take him. Nice run onto the front straightaway then. The cockpit itself reminds me a little bit of like a Trans Am car, but not too unrealistic for a sports car that's been gutted. Now something else to think about too, about what people had before this game came out. Need for Speed was a really popular game. And if you like sports cars, obviously Need for Speed was and is something that you were aware of, uh, but it wasn't a simulator. The first Need for Speed was probably the closest sim uh, thing to a simulator in that whole series. But uh, for folks that really wanted a true driving experience for high-end sports cars, wasn't the best thing. I think everybody knew that that wasn't the closest that could be done. So when this came out, this really was a true simulator for sports cars. And by today's standards, you know, I say it a few times, it's not not anything to write home about, but it uh, still holds up pretty well, I think. It races quite well. There's nothing here that's egregiously wrong. We'll see. So I'm looking at where I am behind. It says point one, which obviously is not true for how far back I am. Fourth gear here, just balance the car through. Might be my lap interval, actually. To my best lap, which this should be, because I'm alone now. I can see on the bottom tracker, oh, I can see the two leaders way up there, just passing the line, so I am pulling them in, but we only got two minutes 50 left. New course record. Just try to be as tidy as possible. But I did love this track because it was kind of an oval for the first corner. Felt a little, little at home to me coming from IndyCar 2 at the time. Being a big oval fan. Ooh, a little, a little deep into this corner here, down to fourth gear. I can see I definitely am pulling in on those two in front. Not sure what car it is. They both look, maybe that's that same driver that was duplicated. Come across the line, though. Should just be maybe three more laps total with the two minutes left. You can hear the announcer in the background. closing up on them now. So we definitely don't need the upgrades to the car. Makes you feel a little bit like a sim racing god here. Just a couple 
couple laps left of time. New course record down to 44.8. You can see the two in front now quite clearly. to get through there, kick up a little dirt. Ooh, gonna run deep again. Oh no, into the dirt. That's gonna hold me up quite a lot. Get down to second gear. That might be the mistake. If I didn't do that, maybe could have pulled up on him. We're coming 40 seconds left, so we either get the white flag this time. Yeah, we actually do. So this is the final lap coming up too. I'm gonna be just too far back. Try to stick with it though. out of the first corner down the hill. We're going through the chicane. Oh, and I can see the taillights. Finally make that corner correct. Bunch of smoke behind, but not quite enough to catch these two BMWs in front. Oh, one more lap and I could have done it if I hadn't messed up the second to last lap, but podium for the first race, no upgrades, max AI, not too bad. So we get 3,000 credits, um, 9,000 or almost 9,000 for our difficulty bonus, and then 3,000 for the race length. I think that goes up, obviously, if I was racing longer races. So I got about 15,000 total to add to my 20 there. Uh, so plenty, plenty now to buy maybe that first turbocharger upgrade, which... May, may just set us over for being way quicker, but you never know. So you can see now turbochargers upgraded just a little bit. So we'll go on now to Sardian Park uh, and try our hand here with some qualifying. All right, so we're coming to the end of the lap here at Sardian Park. And this one's, I remember this track. It's a lot of fun to race at the AI, a lot of beating and banging around. Almost like a street course, but still not not fully a street course. It's got a big jump on the back straightaway too, but we'll come here to the end of the lap and start the first of our two timed laps. This one doesn't ring any bells as to uh, what it might be an interpretation of track wise, but it's a uh, pretty fun track itself. I don't think I've ever seen it in any other games or Sims. Ooh, getting the line all wrong there through the third turn. We'll head up the hill through this quick kink. Second kink here, dip off the throttle just for a second. And we'll come over the top of this hill and it falls away into a jump. <laughs> you can get off the ground there a little bit if you're going fast enough. Maybe not in these cars. is a bit narrower here so it's easy to get the wheels off and just like the last track it's absolute quicksand if you get out there so you got to be careful not the best lap but I haven't done too many laps of practice here since i uh, reinstalled sports car gt so at least made a clean lap got one more to try to do it come through this first 290 degrees Missing the second one a bit. It's gonna set us up weirdly for the third corner again. Ooh, dipping on the grass, this lap's gonna be bad. We'll come through up the hill. Let's see if I can get it off the ground this time. Oh, I do, but I can also get it on the grass a little bit for show. get it through the end of the lap, see if I pick up any speed at all. This should be a fun one to race on. See if I can do one better than I did in the last race, or maybe take that top step of the podium here. Oh, 
All right, so we're ready to race, and I qualified for this one down in 11th, so one worse than the last race, um, but hopefully I can get a better start because I did that poorly on the first one. Looks like, once again, the two Dan Marvins, who are both leading the championship one and two, uh, are starting up front, so I got to try to get up there and beat them uh, without falling off the track at all around this narrow course. All right, on the grid now. Try to get a better start this time. Uh, still a little slow. Oh, oh, I think that's the issue. It went into first gear automatically. So once again, a terrible start. We'll get through the smoke, though, and head down to the first corner. One of the painos comes into me. Oh, and I get dumped from behind. Oh, no, I got wheel damage, too. And I can't see anything through the smoke. I'm not sure what wheel damage will be on the car. The car feels okay, I guess. Maybe just a little messed up suspension. But absolute chaos in the first couple of corners. Might be my fault coming into the first turn, but we'll see. Got 10 minutes to try to catch up. It's actually a 12 minute race, so I got a couple extra minutes in this one. But a bad start all the way back to 16th. Hopefully the car stays in one piece for the rest of the race. Catch up to these guys. I'm not sure who dumped me, but I'll hit them all for measure. Good measure. There we go. We passed the first car. Just gonna look up the inside into the final corner. Oh, they're still faster than me on the straightaway. That seems to be my weak spot right now. Down to the first corner here. Second gear. Not to over rev. Got a Porsche right next to me to the left. Oh, he's side by side too. I just saw his fender there. Come through the third corner, up the hill, pull in front of him. It's definitely through the corners where I've got an advantage, which is good for this track. It's not as many fast sections as the last one. Oh, come to the top of the hill, touching fenders with the panos. the kink there. No, I'm probably saying Pano's wrong. Pano's, Pano's. I'm sure everybody will tell me in the comments, but that's what I remember, <laughs> remember calling it back in the day. All right, we'll come through then. Second gear. It's going to be an ultimate comeback story if I can actually get up front. Looks like the leaders once again, Dan and Dan, have pulled away. I think we'll call them twins and their parents weren't very creative. We'll come through that kink onto the front straightaway over the line. Already back to 12, so just one more position. We're back to where I started. Just under 10 minutes left in the race. Yeah, it does. It races a little like an arcade racer where you can bang, bang, lose the touch fenders. But there's enough realism that it's, uh, it's still grounded enough for somebody that really likes racing games to have fun. I think that's what made it attractive. At the time, it was very realistic. This was one of the best things out there. But even now, it's quite fun to, uh, to drive around on. The circuit's great as well. It's creative fictional tracks like this are sometimes a lot more fun than even the real tracks. I think the ISI group were always good. Ooh. <laughs> really knock fenders there. The ISI group were always good with fictional tracks. Even with the R Factor series, I remember for the first R Factor, Tobin and the Mills Metro Park, those were two that I raced all the time. First couple of corners, then down a second just for a minute here. Trying to get a good run out. Whip the car around. Suspension's a bit soft maybe for a 1999 sports car, but it's fun. And I did try the BMW M3 a bit in just some of the quick racing. And the cars do feel a little bit different. Uh, the Porsche here, I don't know if it has that Porsche characteristic, but it, uh, it moves around the corners a little bit easier than the M3 does. So they definitely have different handling models under them, which is good to see. All right, right on the back of this Porsche, see if I can clump the inside here without hitting somebody for once. Nope, absolutely hit him. That's my teammate car. It's also the Speed Vision car. Oh, I shifted a little too early. Ah, getting overtaken then. Oh, I'm getting knocked by the other Porsche. I'm getting absolutely beaten up in this race. Elbows out. If they hit me, I don't feel bad hitting them. Everybody misses the apex through turn one. Alright. 
over and under move on that Porsche there. Come through the kink. Oh, that's a scary place to touch fenders. Moving the wheel back and forth frantically, trying to keep control of this thing. There we go. Trying to get it up the inside. Oh, no, we're going to spin out. Try to just keep my foot in it and get the car going again. Uh, back to 15th there, 16th behind me. The lowly Pano's way in the back. Oh, this is not going to be good for uh, whatever kind of championship we were trying to do with these three races. All right, come out of the corner. Still got a little over six and a half minutes to go in this. Around the outside, still keeping 15th. Come across the line, six and a half minutes left should be able to catch back up to this whole group, but two spins in one race isn't going to cut it with such a short race. I'm trying to go fast through this section. I've been able to do the first few laps just battling with everybody. Oh, I'll come over the rise there. Right down a second up to third. Closing in a little bit on the group in front. Halfway through the race now. Not going well. <laughs> Not as good as the first one. But a lot of fun still. Just want to get back up to these cars. Maybe pass a few and not finish. As an also ran. that inside open. I want to jump the car in there, but it hasn't been working out. Alright, come through the first chicane here. Nice rhythm on these tracks, which is what sports car racing is all about. M3 now. Let's see if I can maybe come around the outside through here. Ooh, up the inside. <laughs> We're going to touch. That's a little more than a touch. That's a hit. But no worse for wear. Remember, I do have wheel damage apparently too, which I can't really tell, but uh, it's probably slowing me down, but that's a much better place to pass. Almost clean, that one. Feels like, kind of feels like I'm racing go-karts at an amusement park. This is how much I'm hitting people. But we'll come around to complete another lap. All right, three minutes, 30 or so left to go. So just a few laps, maybe four more laps total. Catching another 911. I love the red wheels on this one with more cars with that livery and I know a lot of the cars are based on real liveries um, so I'm sure if I knew the 1998 ALMS series better then a lot of these would look familiar to me I'm sure Dan and Dan are up front leading the way oh let's see if I can sneak it up the inside there down a third. Oh, the Porsche takes advantage. Cuts both of us. That was a pretty good move by the white one there. Ah, oh, I lose so much speed on getting on the straightaway. The acceleration. Have to look at upgrading something that helps the car's acceleration. I thought that would be the turbo. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have gone for the very first upgrade in it. 
that's always the trick is, is that first upgrade actually going to make much of a difference. Work our way up the hill then. Alright, over the top of the jump. Should be able to stick it up the inside here. It's a daring, high risk maneuver. <laughs> able to do it though. Thirteenth, can I get a top ten out of this? I don't know. Just two minutes to go, but three cars sit directly in front of me. Try to maximize the revs coming out of the final corner. They just absolutely beat me onto the front straightaway. Get those apexes where the AI can't. Ooh, get a good run coming out of the corner, but I slam into the back of the Porsche. Kills both of our momentum. Up to fourth gear, just hit the curbs there. The wheel, the wheel pulls to the side. The Porsche feedback's honestly a, a bit distracting in this. I kind of want to shut it off, but it's kind of a novel thing for the time. <laughs> All right, I didn't do that. That wasn't me. Spin the Porsche out in front, up to 12th, got a minute to go. I think we'll probably get the white flag this time, maybe. Hopefully not, though, so I can have one extra lap at these two, try to get up into 10th. I'm sure the stewards will be speaking to me after the race for that spin. Still in third coming out of that corner, it's not good. Come across the line here. No white flag, so we got at least two to go. Chasing Panos and a 911 in front. All right, I can see the white blinking. Wow, they're already at the start finish, so through the couple of spins, I've lost a ton of time on the leaders, but on the lead lap at least. Oh no! deep into the corner, trying to get right back on the track, but that might kill the top 10 opportunity. Ah, I've been running in there so hard, but no car to lean on that time, I guess, to slow me down. Whatever line this is coming into the final corner. Low fuel. I didn't fuel up before the race, so hopefully we make it one more lap. Should. Should do. I can see the fuel gauge there now. Ah, but not going to be able to get a top 10. This is an absolute mess of a race. But it shows how fun Sports Car GT is. You can have these furious races that uh, are not that unrealistic, honestly. I mean, there's a lot more hitting here than you would do in real life, but... Especially if we're talking touring cars, this is um, not far off. The top of the hill. All right, getting the corner that time. If I could only have done that on the last lap, probably would have been up there with him. Kind of the repeat of last race. If I didn't mess up that whole lap, but come through the final corner here, second gear, the final real corner. Accelerate out, 12th place finish, so I lost one place overall, but with the hectic race that was, all in all, not too, too bad of an ending. All right, race results, and uh, I earned nothing in that race, so clearly <laughs> not happy with me. No earnings at all, so I guess you have to finish maybe in the top 10 or so, or maybe get points, actually, to get uh, some some money. But now in fourth place in the championship, tied with Jamie uh, Tyndall going into the last race. Uh, Dan and Dan, 18 points apiece. There's no catching them, but hopefully I can place well and beat Jamie there. And for the last race of this championship, we'll be going to North Point, which is a pretty fun little circuit as well. Uh, and so we'll jump into qualifying. All right, coming around to get onto the front stretch here. It's a cool track. It's um, a little, reminds me a little bit of a Road America almost, or like Road Atlanta as well, like the other ones, but a true road course in itself. We'll see how I can do in qualifying here. And something I haven't mentioned yet about this game as well is that it models uh, nighttime and rain conditions. So uh, all the races here, I guess, in the first season championship are 
Try to get a good line here through the corner, a little bit wide. All the races here in this first championship are just nice daytime weather and things, but did have rain, uh, and it even had rain reflections and things. These were features not really seen in, in games of the time, so just more cool stuff that uh, if you like sports car racing, obviously rain and racing at night are huge parts of that. And so it's uh, cool that they included it here. I think there's also ways to do driver swaps, kind of kind of like GTR2 did, which obviously was also built on a further iteration of this engine. And um, just cool stuff like that was very, very unique in 1999. We'll come across the line. I don't think that was a very good lap. We stayed on the track at least with 58 seconds to see where that ends up putting me. Got one more lap to try to do a bit better here through the non-chicane chicane. Oh, terrible line. the car, keep it in fourth gear, maybe a little slow. Put the Yokohama board, uh, billboard there, third gear, oh, running wide once again, get on the curb, helps actually keep the car on the track, which is nice. We'll come through a couple final corners. A couple final corners. Keep it close to the bollards there on the inside. Maybe I can pick up a little bit. I think I'm a, almost a second up on this lap. All right, so there we go. Best starting position of the uh, season so far in the final race of these three. Starting in fifth position behind Matthew Cohen. Got the two Dans up front, of course, but as long as I can get away from the line good this time, I know it shifts for me into first gear now. Um, hopefully, I can get a good start and challenge them right off the get-go and <laughs> leave everybody else in the dust. Oh, man, all the Pano's cars way at the back there. But, yeah, it should be a good one. Let's do this last race. All right, and this one being the grand finale is a great 15-minute race. Green. Ugh, I don't know how to get the starts. That was a terrible start as well. Get off the line, though. The little white Porsche that I spun out in the last race just got by. We'll head up the hill. I lost a few positions already. It's going to get a little tight here through that chicane. Around the first long right-hander. We can get a nice exit there. Cars behind, side by side. I had a Porsche next to me, actually. My teammate again. Ooh, already knocking into cars. There we go. One way to pass. Kick it. Smoke in front. Of these two side by side. Come around the outside of that BMW. Third gear here at the top of the hill. Riding the bumper of the BMW in front. I'm going to be on the outside for this kink. Oh, maxed out on the RPMs too. Oh, death wobble. <laughs> Man, I'm absolutely terrible for a slap once again, but I haven't spun out at least. Just try to collect it, get it nice and steady through the final corner. Got it a little bit longer here, but need to make sure the leaders don't get away from everyone this time. All right, so eighth position. I lost a few spots off the start. Messy first lap. You just stop hitting everybody to try to get past. It's quite easy to do in this. The AI, at least they don't spin out if you instantly, you know, if you hit them, they don't instantly spin out like a lot of games from this time. Go up the inside there. Ooh, knock into the Porsche teammate. But uh, got by. He didn't spin out. All's good. Down to this kink. Should be able to get through flat easily to dab the brakes in front. It's a good spot to be a little bit quicker. Ah, I can see one of the cars is already so far ahead. It's Dan and Dan. Come through the final corner onto the front straightaway. I'm still slow in a straight line. I didn't do anything with the car. I didn't have any extra credits to upgrade it or anything like that. We'll come across the line, fifth gear. Side by side through these S's. A little scary back out of it. mind these are the slowest cars in the game <laughs> they're, they're pretty speedy and fun so you can only imagine the uh, gt1 cars i've never never done them but i'd love to 
right BMW trying to make a pass on this other Beamer there, but able to get around him on the outside. Come up to the kink, lift to the throttle just for a second. Come up to the final corners. Down to fourth gear. Ooh, almost running wide. Sticking in it. So back up to sixth. One more spot, be in the top five again. So overall, AI on this difficulty is uh, not too bad. I think I think it's actually winnable if I was really good at all the tracks. You can tell that first track we raced on is the one I had the most practice on. So I run meaningfully wide there through the first corner, but. Uh, even without upgrades, if you're, you know, pretty good at racing games, I think this is probably pretty easy stuff at the beginning. I remember it gets quite a bit harder, though, and so it's not a walk in the park to upgrade everything as I come up the inside, <laughs> knocking fenders once again, but getting around the other BMW, back up to fifth now. Once again, late with the shift. I'm sure that's bad for the engine. Got 11 minutes left in this one, so plenty of time to get around these two guys, but will I be able to catch the leaders? Ooh! Knock into him in the final corner. Almost hit the ball arts there. Right, we'll come across the line. Just watching my mirror. Not pulling up on me too much. Just a downshift and a lift, and then back on the throttle through the first corner. Still wide through the second one. Get the line so much better through all this. There we go. Pretty good here. And left hander. Ah, nice run out on the Porsche. Side by side will pinch him coming into the corner. Luckily, just doesn't run into me, which is great. Ooh, got a good run on the Beamer as well down the hill. Fifth gear here. Can't see anything. Of course, the windows are <laughs> fully opaque. So you can't even look through the guy's windshield, but oh, smoking him on the brakes up the inside through the final corner. Okay, up to third. And uh, how far back are we? Oh my god, I can see on the tracker at the bottom pretty far, but we'll see what I can do here lap wise to catch up. Just under 10 minutes to go. Bad through the first corner. Well, I was trying to get a late apex through the second, but just ran wide instead. Down on my best time so far. Let's see if I can pick it back up here. Third gear for just a second. We'll head down the hill. Pulling away now from the cars behind. No issue. Fifth gear. Come up to the last couple of corners. Make sure I don't run too hot coming into this. Maybe go a little faster than that. Right up to the bollards on the inside. I have no idea if you hit those, if they stop the car instantly. I feel like these earlier games have stuff like that. We'll come across the line. All right, it's a new record, so even with missing the first few corners, maybe have started to catch up slightly on the two in front, but we'll have to see if I can keep up the consistency or start being consistent. It's more like it. All right, that wasn't too bad. Cut that one nice and close. Come to the left here. Oh, gonna run a little bit wide. Now onto the dirt. Just trying to eke out everything I can from the car, but not quite good enough. That'll kill this lap. The start of it was quite good, though. Oh, once again, no, no, in the final corner, spinning out, trying to get the car straight again. Hopefully I don't get whacked into from behind. Beamer comes out of the final corner. They I do pretty well avoiding you, which is great to see. You know, it's something actually in the later ISI games that the, the AI actually seemingly got worse than this over the years. I think it became less and less of a focal point. By the time you get to R Factor, you know, the game was pretty much made to race online, so the AI barely did their thing most of the time. Uh, but losing a few positions, this will be more of a fight for third, I think. Should be able to pretty easily sneak up the inside here. Oh no! Oh! 
hitting really hard into the wall, body damaged. Ah, uh, well, there you go, from hero to zero, just like that. see if I can pass these cars again. We just had hit the race midpoint there. I was looking at the message as I careened off the circuit. Slipstream of this BMW. Got a Porsche behind me as well. I'm in 10th. So better than I did. Still better than I did in the last race. But uh, could have been so much more. I was looking at a podium there, but I feel like that might not be possible anymore. down the hill. It's quite the snaking circuit. Once again, though, great fictional track. Come down to the final corner. A lot quicker through this final corner than these cars, so to try to take it easy on the entrance, maximize the exit. But I'm down on speed on the straightaways, which is where it would be easier to pass. I think that's why I'm hitting them so much in the corners. My mid-corner speed is quite a lot better than them. All right, we come to the top of the hill. at the start of this video there's a lot of mods for this game and really everything that you could have ever wanted to race pretty much at the time existed for this uh for this game and sadly a lot of it's been lost over the years because sites like whoa, smack into the back of cars sites like bh motorsports which was huge at the time uh no grip which i think also had quite a bit of content there um, and others, amongst others, have all kind of disappeared over the years. And I'm not sure, I'm sure some folks still have the, that stuff somewhere, but you know, there's no website that cataloged all the add-ons for Sports Car GT. So I did a little bit of searching, see what I could find out there, and I was able to find one site that I'll, uh, I think I'll throw in the description of the video that just has some some random stuff on it, quite a few mods and tracks and stuff. Might be ooh, the only place to uh, find that stuff these days. Wow. Pinos there knocked me out of the way. Oh, I'm on the outside here coming up to this tighter corner. Keep it in fourth. Snake down the hill. At least get in front of that BMW. Two beamers behind me. Leaves the inside open. Ooh. Oh, he turned it on me. No. Oh, into the dirt again. Ah, uh, no, car's streaming by. Down to 11th now. I feel like that wasn't all my fault. I had the spot on the inside. He turned in on me. Well, they're very aggressive nonetheless. Anyways, there are quite a few cars and tracks listed at that site, but nowhere near what actually existed. Ugh. I remember everything from... Obviously, sports car mods. I think they had all the accurate cars from Le Mans and American Le Mans series, Grand Am, uh, Trans Am, all that stuff. But also open wheel mods and NASCAR mods and all the tracks that you could ever want. Ooh, I got low fuel again. I only got three minutes remaining. So <laughs> hopefully I don't have to make a pit stop here too just to make insult to injury as the Panos gets up the inside. And it might be some of the body damage now slowing the car down. I'll just blame it on that. Ooh, it touches rear bumper. Come up to the same corner once again. <laughs> He's going to block me. That's pretty fun AI, at least, if not frustrating. But yeah, he tried to block me there for real. He swerved. And the car feels very slow now. Running out of fuel. Just a couple minutes left in the race. Things have been better <laughs> before. I remember being in third place at one point. All right, we'll come. We should just have a couple laps to go, I'd imagine. Maybe three laps total. 
if I can hopefully get it back around this hooligan in front of me. A 65 car. Over revving just a little bit there. Takes a really wide entry. I'm gonna catch him in the same spot. I'll go around the outside this time. How about we try this? Pinch him. Oh, he's gonna stick it in there. I get a better exit being on the outside. Come up to the Kanku side by side. Not what I wanted. I've been able to do it. Got better top speed than him somehow, at least down this section. Even in the underpowered Porsche that I have. There we go, through the final corner. So I should have at least that. Be nice to pick up one more here and get a top 10 at least. Scrounge something out of this. Uh, but not good credits, so... Yeah, you could lower the difficulty. I mean, you get less bonus credits, but getting anything's better than nothing. And uh, obviously, learning the tracks a bit better would help. Racing more consistent. But it is fun to go through a career mode like this. By the time you get to the top cars, you feel fairly accomplished. You know the circuits quite well. I know you start racing on the real-life tracks pretty soon in the championships. I think Sebring, I feel like Sebring makes an early appearance. And I feel like it has a couple alternate layouts as well, so there's plenty of circuits to race on, uh, especially for the time by default. And then with the mods, you can pretty much race any track that, <laughs> that you would have wanted. Oh, a car goes in the pit lane. So I wonder if everybody needs to pit. Oh, a very low fuel. There's only 41 seconds to go. I have to do an extra lap, so we might actually have to do a pit stop. Getting a lot of spots, but I'm going to run out of fuel, actually. I'm right on zero. I'm looking at the second gauge from the left on my dashboard. And, uh... <laughs> I should have dipped in the pits there. I didn't think we'd actually run out of fuel in this first opening championship, but... See if I can milk it around the track, but I have a feeling it's going to cut out. There is a car in front of me that stayed out, so... Maybe we can make it... No, we're out of fuel! Oh, we're at the top of the hill, though. Can I coast down the whole hill? It's going to be quite slow. I don't think we'll make it. And white flag as well. Oh, in sixth position. I was so close. I feel like if I get to the pit lane, maybe the AI will take over and drive. Because we're actually going to be able to get to the entrance, I think. <laughs> this is not how I anticipated the last race ending. But uh, we'll leave it in. Oh, car's coming fast from behind. Don't hit me. Oh, and they're all speeding by. There's Dan and Dan leading the way. I'm <laughs> still rolling. Got it in neutral, clutching our way there. We'll come through the right-hander here. Here's the entrance to the pits. If I can dip up the inside here, my only save, saving grace here will be if the AI actually takes over for the driving through the pit lane, even though I'm out of fuel. But we'll see. Come right to the entrance. Oh, it does, but... I've got no fuel, so it's so slow. So this is where you can control what I would fill up. We only need, what, five gallons. We do not need to change tires. I want the human to drive. We're not going to fix the damage. I don't think it's going to make it to the pit stall, but we can see here. Checkered flag is out, and uh, we're going to finish dead last <laughs> for this last race. Quite the finale for our little championship, but hope it <laughs> hopefully shows off just a little bit of how how fun this sim is still these days yeah and i think it's going to keep the speed up here it's just slowly rolling down the pit lane as i get lapped now by everybody oh here we go dipping into the pit stall <laughs> made it all the way back three second pit stop for fuel and there we go pulls out of the pit lane and across the line to uh, finish the race man All right, so unsurprisingly, I didn't win any credits or anything for the race, but for the season, uh, I did get a difficulty bonus of 1,500 credits and a race length of 1,500, so 3,000 credits coming out of that to add to our total of 16 or 17,000 now. So finishing fifth place overall, just from the points in the first round, uh, but Dan unsuspectingly, unsuspectedly wins the championship. Unsurprisingly is the word I'm looking for. Chris Bauer in third. I don't know where he came from. I guess he finished second or third in this last race and then jamie tyndall does beat us we're ranked last because we got our points first overall but from there um we could do a new season 
and probably run the same tracks until I get enough credits to move up to GT3 and buy cars for that and everything. I think GT3 cars, yeah, they cost around 200,000. So it'll be a little while to <laughs> finishing like that till I'd have enough credits for, uh, for this but yeah overall hope you enjoyed this little look at sports car gt i think it could be fun to do maybe a bit more if you <laughs> if folks like me trying to run the ai off the track over and over again a really good simulator from the time period and this is just really scratching the surface on on what this thing can do and everybody that played it at the time and a lot of people still play it today uh the mods and things make this make this a really fun uh, sim to play and, and a great one to go back to so hope you enjoyed this maybe more sports car gt in the future but for now that's all so thanks for watching and i'll see you all next time